Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. Did you guys hear something just now? That was weird. Anyway, hi! Hello there, I'm Colthor the Barbarian. Welcome to Yoshi's Island. This is my submission video for AGDQ 2017. Let's dive right into this. So what we're going to be doing today, and we'll just get this run going. So I am submitting for you the warpless category of Yoshi's Island. Yoshi's Island is a Super NES platformer. Uh, came out towards the end of the Super Nintendo's life cycle. It's been a legendary game ever since it has come out. Now, the category we are going to be doing today is called the Warpless category, which for the equivalent of some other speed games, you might think of it as a no major glitches type of run. We will have no warps, no tongue glitches, none of that nonsense, and no collecting of all the random things. It's just a good old-fashioned beat the game as fast as you can without abusing any major glitches. So right off the bat, we're supposed to go down and take a vine, but we're going to be skipping that. Now things are going to happen pretty quick, so I'm going to try to talk at a reasonable pace and just try to give you as much information as we can. First and foremost, beautiful game. You know, when they made this game, the art style of it, it holds up. Compared to today, if they had gone with a more traditional, like, style and tried to make it look like 3D and stuff, it just, it wouldn't have filled. It wouldn't have held the test of time. But because they went with this unique, storybook-driven art style, it's just, it made it timeless. It really did. Alright, so coming up next, we're going to be trying to do a one-frame trick to try and skip a screen. And we did it on the first try. Now what we had to do, again, trying to talk as quick as I can because things are happening quick. What we had to do there was spit, um, spit that daisy into the wall, and as a mechanism for helping things not get stuck into a wall, the game will push things out to the side. So what we did there was we actually clipped the daisy into the wall, the game pushed it out to the side, and we had one frame with which to bounce off the daisy and get over the wall. Pretty neat stuff. Now one of the great things about this game has always been its controls and its mechanics. I'll explain what you just saw there later, but let's get back to the controls and mechanics. This game is very fluid, it's, um, I don't know, the controls just feel so natural and tight. That's really the best term for it, it's just tight. Everything is so responsive, everything is so fluid, truly a well-crafted game. Praised by many developers after its development for the technical achievements that they were able to accomplish. For the technology of the time, this is really a marvel of a game. Now what you'll see at the end here, normally when you go through a goal ring, if you're running at top speed, the uh, it will tick on the very bottom left of the ring there, landing on the flower, but you notice that time it didn't. That's what we call the an oscillation. When I jumped off of that hill, it actually speeds me up just very slightly, and I maintain that speed going over that distance, and we're actually able to get to the goal ring a few frames sooner than we're meant to. So coming to our first uh, kind of mid-world boss dungeon, uh, this is Bert the Bashful's Fort. Another fantastic thing about this game is, a lot of times with games you'll see they reuse a lot of the same sprites, uh, especially for bosses and enemies and stuff. With this game, every boss is unique, and there are so many unique enemies within the environments. Fine. Great. 
Uh, I'll explain that real quick since we just did it. Well, what I was able to do there was that jar actually spawned slightly above the screen. So by timing my egg shot, I was actually able to hit it while it was still in midair. And normally you're supposed to push it off the ledge so that it falls, and after it falls enough height, the jar breaks and you get your key. But because we were able to shoot it while it was still off screen, we were actually able to knock at the appropriate height before, so we don't have to push it manually. Nice little trick. You'll see that abused in a few places where we shoot things off of screen before we're actually meant to, and it causes some interesting effects. It allows us to skip certain kinds of content. Because a lot of sprites in this game don't load until they're actually on screen, or at least close to being on screen. But eggs will persist past to, at least they'll persist, uh, sorry, they'll persist past further than most normal sprites will take to load. Uh, stars are another interesting sprite. They do not unload no matter how far you travel and how far off screen they are. And you'll see that come in handy later. So now we're going to come to our first auto-scroller of the game in 1.5. This is a great time during a marathon to read off donations. There'll be a couple levels like this throughout the run. So this is just a great time for runners just to kind of mess around, do some little swag moves. You can cycle your eggs quick, you can do all kinds of stuff just to keep it entertained. But mostly this is, you know, some good downtime. In a game that's in t as intense as Yoshi's Island, sometimes the downtime is welcome. You know, some runners, they hate the auto-scrollers, they think they're pointless, they think they're dumb, but sometimes you need a little bit of a break. So I don't mind them. Also introducing the Yoshi's Island famous athletic theme. One of the best soundtracks in the game. So we'll just continue on talking about certain kinds of mechanics of the game, since we've got ample time and I can catch up. Uh, movement in this game... Moving fast is very different than basic movement of this game. You know, you've got your simple things like run, jump, walk, make an egg. But if you'll notice when you make an egg, a lot of times you have to stop, you swallow the egg, and you lose all of your speed. Well, there's a simple way around that. If you make an egg while you're jumping in midair, holding the B button, and then quickly making an egg, you'll actually maintain all of your momentum and speed so that you can keep on going. So anytime you see me making an egg, a lot of times I'm doing it midair so I don't lose speed. Goodbye, shy guy. We'll leave him alone. We'll think his deep thoughts. Be forever alone. Now, another interesting speedrun mechanic of this game is your score at the end. You'll notice that throughout this level, I intentionally avoided any red coins or flowers. That's because at the very end here, when the score tallies, for every red coin and flower I get, it wastes time because the score has to tally it up. So we just try to reduce that as much as possible and not get any red coins or flowers. Now that's not always possible because you'll a lot of times you'll uh, actually lose time trying to avoid those things more than you would actually net. So we do it where we can, but it's not always possible. Literally the exact opposite of 100% run. Here we're actually intentionally avoiding picking up anything. Oh, 
Now, coming up next is uh, one of the most iconic levels in the whole of Yoshi's Island. Touch fuzzy, get dizzy. Filled with wonderful little clouds that just, if you touch them, everything just goes crazy. The world starts warping, colors start changing, and it kind of looks like you took some recreational drugs. But uh, this level is just, it's iconic, it really is. And uh, ideally, I'm not going to touch Fuzzy and get dizzy, but sometimes they're unavoidable, so let's see what happens. Fuzzy, please. The Fuzzies, how they spawn is completely random. Alright, so that time, that time we did not touch Fuzzy, and we did not get dizzy. So, good for that. Save the time. Every fuzzy you hit, I believe, loses you 15 frames, on top of making the terrain extra difficult to navigate, so you don't want to touch them. Now we're going to see fuzzy two more times throughout the run. Each time gets uh, is significantly more dangerous because of the environment in which they're in, but we'll come to those when we get there. Now we come to the first world boss, Salvo of Slime. Salvo's an interesting boss. Well, uh, let's, uh, before we get into Salvo, let's try not to take a bath here. Get some tight maneuvering going through there. Also, some precision here. Let's see if we can get it. Excellent. Good. Okay, so anyway. Alright, hold on. I need a little more precision time here. Alright, so now we've come to the boss. This is Sal of the Slime. What we're going to have to do for him is we're going to shoot eggs into him and he's going to divide into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until we've reduced him down to almost nothing. His movement is semi-controllable. Depending on how you hit him, the angles you hit him is really going to dictate and change how he moves constantly. So he's a very, typically a very unpredictable boss. So hopefully we get a good fight here. Good. That wasn't bad. Any 1236 is a pretty decent time coming out of World 1. And that's World 1. Pretty simple, they slowly are introducing you to new, new mechanics. Uh, as you go throughout each world, it's going to get harder and harder as you would expect. And the game's very well paced. They never hit you with too much too fast. You know, it's going to gradually increase the difficulty on you and introduce you to new, new mechanics as you go along. Some games, it just hits you with everything at once and you just have to figure it out. No, not Yoshi. Yoshi, Yoshi does it good. Does it good. So since we're coming into 2-1, I'm going to explain what we call a pipe glitch. What, hopefully what you're going to see me do in the third room is you're going to see Yoshi. It's going to be a little odd. I'm going to go into a pipe. But what you're going to see happen is I'm actually going to jump above the pipe, but then I'm going to be into the next room. This is what we call a pipe glitch, and it should happen right here. There we go. We do, we, we do that by uh, pushing the jump button and the down button at the same time. And all that really does is it helps us skip the animation for Yoshi going down to the pipe. Normally, uh, when we try to do that, you'll see that throughout several times. Normally it only saves about half a second because it only skips the animation. But in two rooms, that room being one of them, it skips a little more time because it actually will transition us to the very next room. It's uh, one of the few glitches that we allow in the Warpless category. But it's fairly precise and if you mess it up, you're going back down the pipe, losing time, and you have to try again. 
That's the nice thing about Warpless, is, especially in terms of a marathon, it's a pretty safe run. There's really no uh, thing in it that would be like a run killer. Okay. That's unfortunate. It's, uh... There's almost always a backup for everything you do. So right there, I messed up a little bit. We ran into the, the fly guy when we were supposed to jump on top of him, but there's plenty of other things for me to jump on and get across. So we lost a little bit of time there, but that's okay. We we'll keep on going, we're back on track. Now we're coming into 2-2. Two 2-2 -two. Two -two is one of the, quite possibly, it's one of the hardest levels in the game to speedrun. There are so many things you have to do precisely and mechanically throughout this level that just makes it an absolute bear to speedrun. The first thing we're going to do is grab this toady. We got hit intentionally there. Now, toadies have an interesting and unique attribute about them. Normally, when you spin an enemy, its hitbox isn't active in midair. But with toadies, as you just saw, their hitboxes are active. So we could actually use them to get over walls that we shouldn't be able to get over by jumping on them and using an extended flutter. And when I say extended flutter, when you jump on an enemy and you hold down the jump button, you'll get a much higher flutter on that first flutter after it bounce than you normally would. And we call those extended flutters. Oh, not now, rat. Not now, rat. Working our way through here. It's a little bit of a maze if you don't know where you're going. Fortunately, the game developers were very kind to put arrows everywhere. One of the challenges of that area in particular is the slopes and inclines. Now, some Mario games, the slopes and inclines have no effect excuse me, on your uh, horizontal speed or the rate which you travel left or right, in Yoshi they do. So most of the time you're going to be seeing me jump over inclines and slopes so that it doesn't slow me down. And now we come to what does Gusty taste like, another iconic level of the franchise. What pretty much looks like a floating trash bag, uh, Gusty is... Uh, he could be a little tricky. He has a weird hitbox that isn't where you'd normally think it would be. I think the hitbox actually starts behind his eyes. Now, I believe this is the first time we get to actually use Super Baby Mario. So what that star did is uh, it gave Mario his cape, if you remember, from Super Mario World. Uh, he can't necessarily fly because he's just a baby. He doesn't know those kind of things yet. But it does allow him to run fast. And while you're Super Baby Mario, it's actually the only time that holding Y actually allows you to run faster like you would normally do in a Super Mario game. Normally, when you run, uh, Yoshi just runs at full speed all the time. You don't have to hold any extra buttons or anything like that. Which is nice, because it gives you one less input to have to worry about while you're speedrunning. Now we're coming into Big Boost Fort. Here we're going to be introduced to, a, uh, to another little glitch. One of the very few glitches that we use in a Warpless run. We call it the Gate Hack. And I'll explain why it works after we do it. Okay, right there, normally you're only supposed to be able to go through those one way. 
and not the way in which we uh, intended. That was another trick we had to do right there, back to back. So I'll explain the first one, I'll explain the gate hack. Normally what, uh, when you shoot an egg up, it doesn't go truly up. If you're holding up, it actually goes slightly backwards from Yoshi. So we abuse that there to actually send the egg uh, forward. We actually to send the egg backward through the gate and it opens it for us. Now, the second thing you saw me do, getting up over that ledge, normally, if you stand there and flutter, you can't get over that edge. The developers tease you a little bit, and it looks like you could just barely make it, but you can't. Ah, but you can. You do what we call a perfect flutter. You have a three-frame window at the peak of your first flutter, at the peak of your jump, to release and repress the jump button. And you can actually gain height off your flutter. Now that's going to be very important. That's okay. Still on a good pace. That's going to be very important because we're going to be using that a lot of times. You actually gain, I believe it's a, a pixel or two of height. Normally you're consistently losing height with flutters, but being able to gain or maintain your height is huge. Which we're going to see. Uh, now we're coming to 2-5, my favorite level of the game. It's actually one of the shortest, but it's very technical, so it's just quick, fast-paced, and technical, and it's just fun. My favorite level by far. Nice, nice, nice. Actually went pretty clean. We had the uh, uh, we didn't quite get what we were expecting. I was expecting a shy guy to come out of that pipe so we could use him to clear out some of our obstacles. So we had to kind of think on the fly there. Now another thing, and you're just gonna hear me singing constant praises about this game. So we'll just get uh, get that out of the way right now. But for as many runners as there are of this game, there's that many variations of strats. Yoshi's Island is, because of its mechanics are so good and fluid, there's multiple right answers to the same questions. And it allows runners to express themselves very vividly and openly in a run, being able to take slightly different routes or do slightly different techniques to obtain, to obtain the same objective. And they don't lose time for it. So you'll have lots of runners will have just preferred methods of doing things. Some might be maybe a half second faster, but ten times more risky. So there's lots, unlike some platformers where there's one specific way you have to do it, there's one place you have to jump, one way you have to do things. Yoshi, there's lots of ways to do the same thing. So every runner is different. But it also means, excuse me, that there's also lots of backups to things, you know, because there's not one way to do it, if one thing fails, you can quickly think, okay, that didn't work, let me try again and do it this way, that'll work. Oh, uh, all right, cool. Now normally, in those gaps that I just ran through are supposed to be two bullet bill cannons. But what you saw me do there, making that giant egg, first of all, hype for the giant egg off those big fat shy guys. What the giant egg dug, does is when you throw it, it turns all the enemies on screen into stars. Now, if you recall earlier, I said that stars uh, do not despawn when they go off screen. So what we did there is we did a sprite overload. Hold on. Alright, 
So, because this game is very technically advanced, it's also very, can be very uh, resource intensive. And there's only so many sprites that can get loaded onto the screen at once. So what we did there is because we created so many sprites that couldn't despawn, we actually overloaded the game with memory, and it didn't have enough memory left to load in the sprites that it needed to. Thus, we were able to clear out those cannons and proceed through normally. Normally, we'd have to ground pound those pillars, go up underneath, and that just takes forever. No thank you, we're moving on. And we're already at the end of World 2. And there you saw me uh, do that pipe glitch again, which saves half a second. We try to do that in as many places as we can, but we have to be careful because if we do it in some places, we'll actually trigger what's called a 1-1 warp. And that is not allowed in this category. That's okay. Trying to go under that save ring, because save rings take time. And right there is the second place where we do a quick screen transition like you saw in 2-1 using the um, a pipe glitch. That is the last time we use it for that purpose. Any other time you see it happen would just be to uh, skip the animation of going down the pipe. Didn't mean to hit that info block, but that's alright. Little information never hurt anybody. Get a good cookie. What we're trying to do there is we have a very, I think it's like a 15 degree angle trying to get there and then we don't have to readjust it. We like to affectionately call that the cookie. Some call it an arrow, but we all know it's a cookie. It's, it's canon. There's a Yoshi's Cookie game, so it's canon. It fits totally fine. Most bosses, you gotta shoot them a bunch of times with your eggs in order to defeat them. This boss is different, though. This boss has no health. It takes no damage from eggs. So what we have to do for him... ...is push him over the edge. And good, we didn't get the extra push. Still a good pace, so I'm mid-28. Now the time you're seeing right here is the world record time for this category. I do have the record, so I did not mention that earlier, but that's alright. I've been, I've been playing this game now, speedrunning it for, I think it's two years. It's been, it'll be two years this month. Was it three? No, two. 
No. <laughs> oh, it's just been so long now, I can't remember. Anyway, not important. Welcome to World 3, home of monkeys. Now the monkeys in this in this stage in particular are fairly passive. But as you'll see later, they do get a bit more aggressive. Monkeys can have watermelons and spit seeds at you. Monkeys eventually get uh, bombs they can throw at you. They can throw cactus. And if they're running past you, some of them can actually steal Mario off your back. And then just run away with them. It's incredibly annoying. Still not the worst enemy in the game, but it's okay. Nice. Do a little damage boost there. Right there we actually let the monkeys grab Mario because they're on a bit of a swing. And then we just turn around and tongue the opposite direction so we get them right back as soon as they grab them. It's the quickest way through there. It's probably the Yoshi's closest equivalent to a damage boost. Although not really, but close enough. Alright, now we're coming to another fairly uh, precise and technical level. Go up here. Just clear everything out of our way with our eggs and keep on going. That went pretty well. Now here the monkeys could start grabbing Yoshi, so we're going to try to dance around him and get him out of our way. Their jumping pattern is, is a little RNG-ish, so sometimes you'll do the same movement and they won't jump at you, sometimes they will, so just, just best just to knock them out so there's no chance to grab Mario. Entry. Now right after that transformation, we're going to go into another transformation. The one and only time in a warpless run we get to see the submarine. The submarine is pretty cool. It can shoot torpedoes. It's actually the only vehicle with a built-in weapon. And I'm going to try to uh, kill as many things as I can to reduce lag in this area. There's a lot of things happening. Bombs, torpedoes, enemies. So I'm going to try to kill off as many things as I can. Now, Torpedo's path can be a little random. Actually, it can be very random. So sometimes you think it's going to hit consistently, and it'll just loop around and make a really weird path. So there's always a little bit of hesitation. you got to give the Torpedo's a little bit of mistrust. fish. That's the first time we're introduced to fish and frogs. Now fish are one of the very few RNG elements in this game. Now I've mentioned RNG a few times, we mean, you know, random number generator. It's just basically a term we use to describe the randomness of something in the speedrun community. Now 
World 3 has probably some of the most RNG in the game. The fish in particular, you're going to see them a lot. Uh, where they jump, if they jump, is completely random. So, it's a lot of times you may see me shoot off seemingly random eggs when there's fish around. It's usually in just in case the fish decides to jump out at me. And now we come to Sir Froggy's Fort. This fight uh, for Sir Froggy is uh, quite a famous fight. As you'll see later on, he will actually eat you and take you into his body, and you have to actually fight him from the inside. But this fight has actually evolved within the last year. Normally, uh, unlike most bosses, where they take a set number of hits, Froggy actually has like a numerical health value, and the damage you deal to him per egg shot can vary drop down here. Depending on many different factors. The angle in which the eggs come at you, the speed. So normally what we once thought to be a consistent seven egg fight, we can actually get it down to a five now with a little bit of luck and precision. So that's just another way. As old as this game is, it's still evolving and still new strats are being thought up all the time for it. And here we are, so froggy. <laughs> so the old way to fight him, you're gonna see some shy guys drop down his throat, would be to bounce the eggs off the sides of the walls and you deal more damage that way. Now what we do is try to get as far to the side as we can and shoot them as, as close to a 45 degree angle as we can. Yeah. Right. And that was six. Now we're moving on to 3-5. This first screen of this level could be very, very tricky. 3-4. Got a lot of foam here that we gotta get through. That was really clean. It uh, requires a lot of precise egg shots to shoot a clean path through the foam so we can get right through. That was pretty clean. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to say about 3-5, fortunately. Pretty straightforward. Just run to the end. I can, however, mention about the gold rings. Goal rings, depending on where you land in the goal ring, you can either land high or land low. You want to try to land as low as possible because it will actually, the time difference between the highest point in the goal ring and the lowest point in the goal ring is about 10 frames, I think. Which may not be a lot in a 60 frame per second game, but added up over the course of 60 some levels, you're talking a few seconds here, which in speedrun terms is a lifetime. Just 
just uh, borrowed Mr. Rat there to get up and over. Normally you're supposed to shoot that cloud there and spawn some stairs, but we don't like doing that. And we're done. That's one of those stages that gives new players a lot of trouble because they can't find the key. But for a speedrunner who knows the route, it's one of the quickest and the easiest. So now we're coming up to 3-7. The first screen of this one is very RNG heavy. There's a lot of fish that we're going to try to bounce across to get across this water quickly. And depending on how the fish react, we can either get a very slow pattern or a very fast pattern. So let's see what we get. So you got a very slow pattern. It had the potential, but it's just fish spawned in just the wrong places. This is the first time, and one many times, I'd like to thank the developers for not making walls as high as they should be. We're going to see that a lot of times, and I'll make sure to shout out to the developers every time. You would think that wall would go up to some sort of invisible uh, boundary, but it doesn't. It actually stops right at the edge of the screen, so using that, using that bouncy ball, we could actually get up and over when normally we have to go down and around. So thank you, developers. And now we're coming to 3-8. This is a fun level. Uh, with a, with a uh, very unique boss at the end of it. Which, if everything goes well, will be a very quick fight. Naval Piranha. Now right at the bat, we're going to see these ghosts which we have to shoot to drive them back so we can get past them. Also right there, nice little uh, tongue clipping. For whatever reason, we use our tongue right there. It gives us some invincibility frames so we can actually clip right through that guy. Now, normally I would only take five eggs going forward here, but Marathon's safe, I'll take a full six. Just because, just to be sure that we uh, kill the boss as quick as possible later. Now those ghosts... Oops. Normally, as you might have saw there, those ghosts fill up the whole screen, and it normally takes about four or five eggs to get past them. But using... Uh, But using that mechanic I mentioned before, how we can hit things off screen as they're spawning, I'll take a few eggs here, just to be safe. We can actually hit him as he's spawning, and as he's spawning he grows very quickly, but if we hit him, hit him soon as he's spawning... Also, there, here's the boss, and there's the boss. <laughs> Normally you would walk into that room, the whole animation would start, it'd sprinkle them with dust, and then the fight takes about three minutes. But the developers left a little easter egg in there where you could actually shoot the sprite of the boss before he gets big and kill him in one shot. The famous Oh My. And just like that, we're halfway done with the game. Three worlds down, three worlds to go. Now in 4-1, we're going to get reintroduced to the fuzzies, if you remember them. Yeah. 
Now this time, fighting through the fuzzies is going to be a lot more dangerous than in 1.7. We're going to be on these small platforms, and if we're not careful, the way the uh, level waves and moves, uh, we can actually clip through the floor and die horribly. Wow, that was actually some of the best fuzzy RNG I've ever seen here. Wow, that was good. Still drug free. Come on. Had too many eggs. She just kept going. I always have to be conscious of your egg count, even in warpless. What happened there? is I didn't realize I had a full six eggs because I had such good fuzzy RNG that I didn't have to use any of them. So if you have six eggs, the Shy Guys won't spawn out of those pipes, and nor will any other enemies. So what I was hoping for was the Shy Guy would pop out and I would grab him and use him in a bit. But because I had a full six, he didn't show up. I probably should have just kept going, but it, it kind of threw off my pattern a little bit, but it's okay, not a big deal. Now coming into 4-2, not a whole lot to say about 4-2, sorry, not a whole lot to say. We're just going to try to get through this level as quickly and efficiently as possible. Although I could certainly mention why I was tonguing the wall there. Uh, one mechanic about Yoshi is if you tongue something, it actually stops his momentum altogether. So if I tongue a wall, tongue a ceiling, it'll actually stop that vertical or horizontal movement respectively. So when I have to make tight turns like that, uh, it's actually very beneficial for me to stop my momentum so that I can turn quicker. Now hopefully what we see right here that right there is called a Baxter, named after the famous Tasser, who discovered that if you can, uh, when you tongue an egg, you kind of juggle it, you can actually toss it ahead of you, and the next Yoshi will actually pick it up. It doesn't save any time, but it's cool, so we do it when we can. Now on this stage, we're going to be introduced to balloons for the first time. Now what you saw me immediately right there is I tried to get as high as I could and then look up and scroll the screen because where the balloons spawn is at the bottom of wherever the screen is. So we're trying to get the screen as high as we can so that the balloons spawn at a higher point, so therefore saving us time. Now we're getting rid of some eggs here because we're coming up to a very laggy area and the fewer sprites on screen the less lag we'll encounter so if you try to go in two is the ideal number of eggs there. I hit very minimal lag and I'm going to need a couple eggs going into the next level so. Now we're coming into Marching Mills Fort. This is one of the most difficult dungeons in the game, but it has a very unique level design to it, as we'll see in a bit. Once we get past this intro area, also everyone say hi to the giant chomp. Hello giant chomp, please don't eat my face. I appreciate that very much. Now, this stage has a very unique X-shaped design to it, and at each of the X points of the X is a room, and inside that room is a key. Four keys that we're going to need to get to the boss. Now, the order in which we do them 
is, is primarily due to the number of eggs required. Oh wow, we have to that. Oh, nice. Because keys take up an inventory slot where Yoshi's eggs would normally be, we try to do them in the order of the rooms where we need the most eggs to the rooms where we need the least eggs. Could have went ham there. Next room we're going to go is down to the bottom right. Every room has its own unique little peril to it. This room, it's going to be blue spikes. Yep, get in there. Now here we're going to try another perfect flutter. Yes, that saves us some time. Normally, if you miss that, you have to flutter again, get on that pink platform and jump. It's slow, it's terrible, nobody cares. Gotta go fast. Now, we've seen it a couple times already, but with those green piranha plants, they, when you hit them, their hitbox actually goes away for a short amount of time, allowing you to run through them if you're quick enough. We saw that in 3-8 and 4-3, and once again there. And I believe we'll see a few more times coming up. Now, what you saw me do there a little bit ago, uh, taking that bucket, there's actually a way to flutter underneath that uh, platform and not have to take the bucket. But it's very precise and instant death if you fail even a tiny bit of it. So for marathon safety, we, we won't be doing that. Unless they throw enough money at me in a donation incentive. That might be the, <laughs> that might be the only thing to convince me to attempt that in a marathon setting. Maybe if I did it right after I got the save ring, it wouldn't be too bad. So now we've got all our keys, now we're just beelining right for the boss. I don't want that egg, just to be safe. <laughs> and here we have one of our first cameos in the game, Kirby. You all know him, right? Actually, it's not really Kirby, but it sure does look like him. Now what we do for Mild here, we stomp on him and he continues to split into more and more pieces. Nice, good shot. Now, it's met, again, this is another one of those things, as many different runners as there are in this game, there's probably that many strategies for fighting build. And everyone has their own just preferred method of doing it. I do what people refer to as the double-double, where we smash on two of them at the same time, and I do it twice. And there's many variations. There's a single-triple, there's another double-double. It's a very unique fight. Unique in the sense that there's many unique ways to go about it. Uh, four five. What we were supposed to do is uh, we were supposed to be pushing a chomp rock throughout this entire stage. But once again, shout out to developers for not making walls as high as they should be. We we're actually able to extend a flutter over that first wall and pretty much skip the entire stage. So thanks again, developers. You guys are great.
Alright, coming into the four six. This whole level is just filled with fish. Now you remember before how I mentioned that fish are probably the highest RNG variant in this game. Well, we're gonna be dealing with a lot of them, so hopefully they're very kind. Yeah, there's one. Hello. Go away, fish. Go away. They just love to try and get you. That fish would have definitely hit me if I didn't shoot it. So we're just going to be firing off a couple eggs just to clear the path. Oh, you rotten little. Ooh. Even with the egg, you still got me. Again, that we are abusing the fact that we can clip through those guys if we if we act quick and shoot them. Uh, coming into four seven, not a whole lot to say about this level. There is a trick that uh, you can attempt to do that, unfortunately, I'm not familiar with. We call it the Chicken Baxter. Now, if you recall earlier, I mentioned that a Baxter is being able to pass off an egg at the end of a level. Well, if you just saw that big bird right there and her babies, you can actually pick up those babies for ammunition and they act like sort of a boomerang. Well, you can actually do the same thing, Baxter them to you at the end of the level, but it requires some very precise memory manipulation and specific IDs, which I won't quite get into here, but what it essentially allows you to do is to take those uh, chickens, which are into the next level, which you're not supposed to be able to do, and you can use them to kill the boss there in a much quicker fashion, but it's a uh, one frame trick, along with a uh, bit of a setup for it, so we won't be doing that here. Now coming into 4.8, uh, 4.8 is actually, uh, there's some new strats that we've actually developed within the last few weeks that hopefully I could showcase here, where we use uh, a turtle shell and where we despawn one of these spike uh, rotators. Now right there, there was supposed to be a rotating spike arm, but we were able to despawn it by spitting that ghost right here. Oh, what? Hmm. That was unfortunate. Normally, we'd make it under there. Oh well, not a big deal. Not really losing a whole lot of time for that. Also, we just walked through a middle ring and didn't have to activate it. That goes back to that sprite overloading thing that I mentioned. Because we were able to we were able to actually stutter the game a little bit by hitting that cloud at the same time that we were going through the ring. So we actually skipped the animation of activating the mid-ring. Now we're gonna grab one of those eggs I threw here, because we're gonna need four eggs to start off this fight. Now we're coming to Hook Bill. Now if we do the fight correctly, but well before I get into that, this bit right here, uh, you can actually keep running and it doesn't actually do anything. But instead of running, we're going to try to inch ourselves close to the center of the screen as possible. So when you saw it right there, where it shifted and those platforms exploded, it saves us a little bit of time there. 
Now this is Hookbill. What we're going to try to do, normally what you do for him is you shoot him a couple times with eggs and then ground pound on his belly. Well, what you can actually do is shoot and ground pound at the same time as he's falling to do it a little bit quicker. And if we do it right, we'll see a little surprise at the end. Okay, good. A little trick we like to call blast off, and you'll see why we call it that. One more time. And blast off. Oh, forgot to split. It's okay. So that's not bad. About a one hour time is a, is a pretty, is really good time to be at the end of World 4, so we're on a good pace. Now my estimate for this run is going to be an hour and 50 minutes, and my PB is an hour 43. So even with a, even with a handful of deaths, it'll be e super easy to clear that one hour 50 minute time. And now we're coming to World 5, filled with obligatory ice physics that for some reason every platformer has to include. Now we're gonna grab this cloud here. Now you actually move at the same horizontal speed on the cloud, but this is a very vertically intensive level. So it allows us to navigate much faster vertically. Thread the needle here, and nice. Good stuff. Hey now, hey now. That's actually a really sweet shot I just did there to get rid of that stalactite. So an interesting thing, you saw me running on the ice there. Uh, it's actually faster to run on the ice and slower to run on the snow. So anytime you see snow, I'm just going to be jumping constantly because it actually slows you down. But if I'm on ice, I'm going to try to stay on that ice for as long as I can because it actually speeds me up. Just a little bit, but it's enough that it helps. Alright, now we're entering 5-2. What you're supposed to do at the beginning here is you're going to see uh, that snowball. We're supposed to push it throughout this whole section. And then use it at the end to jump off of it, but... We're not going to be doing that. I brought that little penguin with me just as a backup in case I couldn't get the perfect flutter there. Whoa there, okay. Well, I guess we're doing this without the cloud. It's actually faster without the cloud, but uh, it's also a lot less safer. But again, that just goes back to what I was talking about, is there's always a backup plan. Right, so now we're supposed to ride the gondolas through that whole section, but they happen to place penguins in the perfect little location, so we'll take the penguins instead. Now we're coming up to 5-3, another iconic level of the franchise. 
Uh, it also has the famous skiing section. This is also probably where a lot of new runners run into a lot of trouble. Uh, a lot of deaths happen in this level because it's very precise, very quick, and there's a lot of ice. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm just going up and over. Again, I'd like to thank the developers for not making walls as high as they appear. It allows us to do things like this and just completely bypass that whole section. That would have been that would have been quite unfortunate if I died there. Oh no! Hold on. Oh, trapped. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, that's probably one of the worst kinds of deaths you can get in this game because it was so far along. That's okay. And there's no, unfortunately in this level, there's no like safety strat, there's no mid-ring to grab on the way there, so you just gotta kind of hope for the best. Fortunately, we have to do pretty much the whole level over again. But that's alright. That's why I kind of gave myself such a generous <laughs> generous estimate. Oh, nice. Didn't expect to get that. Let's just get rid of that penguin this time. Not dealing with him. And for the sake of a marathon safe strat, we'll just grab that. You're gonna see me intentionally running into a few rocks here. It's because the developers, when they coded the skiing section, also shouts to the snow hat. Uh, when you're in a ball rolling around, you actually don't slow down when you're going uphill. So in a couple places we're gonna be abusing that to go a little bit faster. Also, best screen in the game. Don't need to cut, touch your controller. Best screen in the game. But you can touch it if you want to to go a little bit faster. coming up to the uh, one of the hardest levels in the game, 5-4, with the infamous 5-4 skip, which we will be attempting to do. Uh, this involves a very long series of perfect or semi-perfect flutters in order to traverse this area. Uh, normally you're supposed to ride this ghost across this long area, but it was found out that you could, through uh, bouncing off of some enemies and through a lot of perfect flutters, you can actually get around it. And it's incredibly difficult, probably the most difficult, without a doubt, the most difficult thing I've ever had to learn to do in a video game. But it saves about a minute and a half, which is huge. 
Even if you die and get it on the second attempt, it still saves you time. Third attempt, I think it about equals out, depending on where you die, so. Uh, the commentary is going to be a little low for the moment, because I really need to focus on uh, this upcoming section. But we're not there quite yet, but we're almost there. Okay. That's fine. I didn't want that baby anyway. Now this save ring we're definitely going to take, for safety reasons. Alright, here we are, upcoming to this section. This is the, uh, this is the 5 4 skip. And we did it. Good stuff. Whew. I don't know if you can see it on my face, but that was intense. Whew. Alright, well we got through there. So already, <laughs> I'm pretty happy with this run already. Now we come to the boss Sluggy. Here we're going to see it abused again, once again, shooting our eggs off screen and then spawning things by moving back and forth. So, let's see if we can do it. Perfect. Normally what you're supposed to do is use all your eggs to pound through his gel-like body until you hit his heart, which uh, on average takes about four to five eggs to do with each bit of damage, but we're here what we actually do is we shoot the egg and then we sp and then we move the screen a very specific way so that Sluggy's body spawns right over top of where our egg is at the time. Very precise, but very fast if you do it. And here we're introduced to a new enemy, the Goonie Birds. Uh, you can actually ride the Goonie Birds for an infinite amount of time, but I don't believe we'll be doing that. At least I hope not, unless something goes horribly, horribly wrong. Good. Now I'm going to be taking the helicopter here, because it's safe. <laughs> But you could actually have you actually have the option of not taking the helicopter, and there's a uh, bit of a tricky path you can navigate underneath, and it actually is a little bit faster. It saves you about a second worth of time. However, it is incredibly risky. Incredibly risky. So certainly not worth it for a marathon. Won't be do. I don't do it normally, just because it's only a second's worth of time you're saving and you're risking potential death. Plus, a lot of times your heart's racing because you just got through 5-4. So, I tend to opt out of that strat. Also, see if we can get a little bit of, a little bit of swag here. Nice.
Coming up to 5-6, we're going to hit our second auto-scroller of the game. So this is a great time to read donations. Because this last, this one lasts a good while. Did I need red, red eggs? No. I definitely didn't mention it before, because I have to say something to talk about during these auto-scrollers, so we're going to talk about eggs for a second. Uh, there's three kinds of eggs, not counting the big eggs. Green eggs, which are just normal, everyday eggs. There's yellow eggs, which when you break them open give you a coin. And then there's red eggs, which when you break them open give you two stars. Now there's a yellow egg. Hey, give me that again. Hit me. Oh. Now every time an egg bounces, it changes colors from green to yellow to red. Very popular and very useful in 100%. If you take damage somewhere, it's always good to try and have a red, a red uh, egg with you case you need the health, because 100% you have to finish the level with 30 stars in order to get as part of the 100%. And Warpless, don't have to worry about it. In Warpless, uh, we tend to avoid red coin, or sorry, red uh, red eggs, because uh, creating more sprites on the screen can often lead to lag. So we try to avoid that. Also, we're gonna steal her babies, or at least one of them. So you can see how the they act like little boomerangs. They're great. Now we're getting rid of them here because they could be uh, potentially problematic. Also for the sake of a marathon, we'll definitely be grabbing that ring. The last thing we want to do is die after an auto score. Especially one as long as that. That would be quite tragic. So we'll take that ring there just for safety. Taking a ring only loses you about 1.7 seconds, so... Not the worst thing to take it. Try to kill off a few enemies here, reduce lag, and just generally get them out of our way. Alright, now that the auto scroll is all done, donations are red. We're back to full speed. Except this time we're going left. This whole level is just a platform nightmare. Okay. 
We're fine, we're fine. It's all good. Now you have to be careful on those gray blocks. Sometimes they'll do something. If you, uh, it can actually eat your inputs. And by that I mean you could push the jump button and nothing will happen. That's just, that's a thing. If you happen to catch it right when it's starting to shake, does a little bit of a shake, right when it's about to start dropping. And it's that little bit of a shake, which will sometimes eat your input, so. Fortunately we didn't get that this time. It's usually fairly avoidable, but it can catch you off guard if you're not careful. Alright, next we'll come up to the final level of World 5, Raphael the Raven. He is probably the most notorious piece of RNG in this game. The most. Um, we'll cover it a little more as we get closer, and I'll explain why. Now let's just get through this level. So by timing our jumps at the end of when those uh, red platforms move, we can actually catapult ourselves a little higher than we're meant to. <laughs> Thank you, screen, for finally catching up. So anyway, talking about Raphael the Raven, uh, when we get to him, he's actually going to be on a little moon. Very unique fight. Again, this game is just brilliant for its uniqueness with its boss fights. No boss is the same. Each boss is unique, has new, different art, it's different mechanics. Brilliant game. Anyway, so Raphael the Raven, you fight him on this little moon. And the direction in which he goes is completely random. Uh, he can go left, he can go right, or he can actually stand still. Also, after his first initial movement, he can jump and shoot sparks. He can just stare at you for a little while, so hopefully we'll get a good pattern and be able to kill him quickly and move on. So the famous, ideally what we want him to do is to go left. That is ideal. We want him to go left and give us no sparks. That would be ideal. We'll see what he gives us here. Go left. Go left. Go left. Oh, he went right. Hopefully he doesn't... Okay, good. If he, he can also go right and then stop right in the middle, where you can't hit him, that's the worst RNG. Right. Not bad. So he gave us some bad RNG, but it's okay. He gave us sparks both times, and he went right, but fortunately he didn't go right and stop. Alright, so we're almost there. One more world to go. Now this, obviously, World 6 is going to be the hardest level. The hardest world, I mean. Now it just throws everything at you. Levels get tougher, movement gets much more precise, and things are going to get hairy. So despite a death in World 5, uh, we're still way ahead of estimate. Way ahead of estimate. And there aren't any tricks coming up, aside from maybe 6-6. Six, six, there aren't any tricks that uh, should cost us the rest of the estimate. Again, Warpless, overall, really safe run if you give a proper estimate. And 150 should be plenty of time. Now 
coming up, we're coming to this little section. A whole bunch of these dancing guys. There we go. That that bit's always scary. You're off even a little bit. Okay. Okay. Dang. <laughs> well, I didn't die where I thought I was gonna die. But I should have waited for uh, the shy guy to spawn out. That's okay. Actually, that's a pretty quick death, all things considered. Jump a little early there, just to be sure. <laughs> Now here we see the same chump guys from way back in 1-2. Except they're a bit more aggressive this time. Typically though, as long as you're holding right, you can stay ahead of them. Whoa there, except for him. But we're still doing good, still on a good pace. Now 6-2 coming up is one of my, also one of my favorite levels. It's just another, my, you know, my typical love for these kind of levels. It's short, quick, and intense. Now what you can see me do there with those little karate guys is I can actually tongue them and clip right through them. It actually gives me a few frames of invincibility. Well, not giving me invincibility frames, but it kind of disables the hitbox of the enemy so that I can get through them unscathed. Goodbye, rat. So shoutouts to developers again, thank you for not making walls as high as they appear. Alright, 6-3 coming up is going to be the last instance where we meet the fuzzy. And possibly the most dangerous area to meet him. Hopefully, if we can get a drug-free run, that'd be great. And we're also introduced to a new mechanic here called Spinning Logs, which as they're spinning, we can actually run right into them, and they will catapult us forward. Or catapult us upward. Normally, you're supposed to just wait for them to stop spinning, so that you can land on them. Hello, fuzzies. Try to clear them out as best we can. Alright, good. A drug free run! Always exciting. That was excellent.
<laughs> now we're coming into two. F or, I'm sorry. Now we're coming into six four. Home of tap tap. And we're also going to see a surprise uh, return of an old boss. Now the trick to this section, and maybe it's obvious, is don't stop. All those platforms are on kind of the same sync together. So the fastest way to get through it is to make sure you're not slowing down at all. Also, again, pipe. Wall's not as high, thank you. We're gonna see that again one more time. So here we're gonna meet an old friend. If you remember the, uh, the boss of World 1? Well, he's back. And he's gonna give us a key so that we can continue. Now what you want to try to do is kind of corral him in that little section so you can dump as much damage onto him as quickly as possible. Now upcoming in this area, there's actually another salvo you're supposed to go fight to get another key to be able to uh, progress forward. And for the last and final time, I believe, shout out to the developers for, uh, hmm, hold on, hold the shout out. There we go. Shout out to developers for not making walls as high as they should be. It saves us so much time. We don't have to kill Salvo, we don't have to get a key, and we can just go. Now because I grabbed that middle ring for safety, we can go ahead and try the lava skip. a little bit of height there, I was starting to get a little worried, but normally you're supposed to take the log and just ride it, kind of surf it across the lava, but it's a little, very tiny little bit quicker if you just flutter across the whole thing. And that's the boss fight. Four egg shots and he's done. Alright, four more levels to go. Now we come to 6-5, the very long cave, the final auto-scroller level of this game. And it's a long one. Now this auto-scroller lasts a long time, but the level itself is actually surprisingly small. They were able to uh, very cleverly actually loop you around a small area so it looks like the level's a lot bigger than it is. And while this, uh, while we're scrolling through here, I'll explain a trick that we're going to use at the end of this, called, uh, perfect jumping. Now, jumping in this game... <laughs> also, these shy guys are amazing. This is a, uh, 1.0 only glitch version in the, this version of the game. Grab those guys, they actually lose their gravity. Anyway, back to what I was saying, perfect jumping. Um... You know, normally you're just moving around, the camera's following you, no problem. You jump, the camera's gonna keep up with you. But, if you jump on the exact frame that you are able to, right before you hit the ground, there's actually one frame where you can push the jump button, Yoshi will jump, but the game doesn't register him as actually having touched the ground. Now what this does, is because the game doesn't think you've touched the ground, the camera won't follow you the way it normally would. 
And some of the uh, triggers in this game, as we're going to see later on, there's an auto scroll trigger that only loads when the camera is at a certain position. So what we're able to do is if we could do a perfect jump, we will keep the camera where it is and bypass the auto scroll trigger and just be able to run through an entire section, which would normally be an auto scroller. So I'll try to explain those kinds of things before we get to them so that you're not too confused. Well coded game. Well coded game. Actually, it really is. I make fun of it. But it truly is a marvel. Dying anywhere in this level is catastrophic. You're probably losing five minutes of time. Fortunately, there's not too many opportunities to die. It's pretty much just the lava and just, you know, keep up with the screen. through this first auto scroll section of, of the of this level now like I mentioned there is a second auto scroll portion on the next screen but hopefully we'll be able to skip that it's a one frame trick but it's fairly consistent yeah, no. I always like to imagine that I can uh, push it along now we'll grab this ring here just for safety And we got it on the first try. Excellent. Now this whole section right here is supposed to be an auto-scroller. But like I mentioned before, we were able to skip the loading of the trigger for the auto-scroller. And just run through it. Good stuff. Pardon me a moment. Apologize, fighting a bit of a cold this week. It's not gonna keep me from playing Yoshi. All right, now we come to six six. There's a key we have to get here, and we're supposed to push this rock to go all around this kind of maze-like area before we can get the key. But we, again, we don't like going slow. And that is very slow. Now there's two methods to get the key, and I'm gonna do it the dumb risky method. Just like that. We call that rockless. Normally, you could push a rock down there and use that to uh, kind of clip your tongue through and get that key, but that's a little bit slower, though less risky. Okay, we grab the key and we're done. Only two more to go, we're almost home. Now we're coming to 6-7. Basically screen manipulation of the level. Ah, uh, we didn't get the first bit. In a lot of places, what you're going to be trying to do in this level is try to manipulate the screen a little bit so that you can load platforms sooner. Specifically, these green platforms are spinning around. Uh, they they uh, don't load until you get much closer to them, or until you can see them. But in a few areas, you can look up and scroll the screen a little bit so that they spawn sooner. And that's ideally what we're going to try to do. See right here, I'm going to be looking up, so we can get this one to sync up. The baby taking that ring, but oh, that's okay, we don't need it. 
Now, within the last, I guess, year and a half, we've actually discovered a pretty significant skip in this level. Uh, we affectionately refer to it as 6-7 skip. Uh, we're coming up to a somewhat of an Otter Scroller section where we're going to be riding this green platform and the skip, as we call it, allows us to skip this section. However, it's uh, incredibly precise and only one person has ever been able to do it on console and never in a run. While it only loses about 20 seconds if you fail it, and it's not really particularly risky, it's still incredibly precise. So for the sake of a marathon, I think we'll skip it. Goodbye, skip it. And the way you do the perform the uh, six seven skip is uh, you take one of those snippets and uh, from the other side of this wall, kind of like what you saw me do in 1-2 where I spit that daisy into a wall and used it to bounce up and over. It's the exact same principle except you're using a snippet. It's a much tighter window to deal with and it's just almost impossible. Also, this will be the final time we see uh, Super Baby Mario Now we're going to be using this cactus to open the gate by spitting him inside and bouncing him backwards. Oh, almost. We tried the Baxter again, tried to get some swag in there. And now we've made it. Bowser's Castle, 6-8. Start things off with a little uh, helicopter section. Normally this is pretty dicey if you're a new player to the game, but actually, if you just stay by these coins, and just go straight and go as fast as you can, that's all you have to do. Pretty cake. Now coming up. There's going to be four spinning doors, and we're going to shoot an egg to unlock one of them, and we want door four. Just like that. Easy every time. It's not random at all, so if you shoot an egg in the same place at the same time, it'll work like clockwork. It'll work like this. That'll get a phrase out of Okay, sorry, I lied. Streamer lied. We got one more auto scroller. Now we're just gonna dance with Kmeck for a little bit. Funny enough, when he's disappeared, his his hip his uh sprite is still there. You just can't see it. It's, you can see Yoshi tonguing and it's actually hitting his hitbox. So we're also going to try to avoid getting hit by Kamek, because if we get hit, it loses time, so... But yeah, I have a little fun with him. I'm actually trying to get him to despawn some of these platforms because if, if those platforms are gone, he actually has nothing to spawn on to, so he won't be around for portions of it. Go away, Kamek, go away. We're almost there. Now that's the last middle ring before the boss, but actually it doesn't do anything except give you stars, because as soon as you get through this door, this becomes your new checkpoint. What's up, Kamek? 
Whoa. Sorry, it's my little tradition. He just wants to ride the green donkey. How'd you let him? Baby about to have a tantrum. Oh. <laughs> he just wants to ride the green donkey. Now... The infamous TIA. No run is complete without the TIA. Some argue that it actually loses you a few frames, but... Come on, you, you gotta do it. It's pretty much required. Now we come to the final boss. Probably one of the most epic fights in all of gaming history. Completely different than any other fight you've come up to until this point. You're still going to be shooting eggs at the thing, but instead of shooting them left and right, you're shooting them into the background. What's up, Bowser? position right now. When he's like this, it's uh, very difficult to hit him. Take seven shots to kill Bowser. One more. Want to do it. That looks like it's good. I think we're good. Alright, one more. Uh, streamer lied. Streamer lied. I forgot I didn't hit him while he was... Go away, Bowser. Go away. Go away. Okay, now he's dead. I forgot that I didn't hit him while he was uh, throwing rocks. Threw my time up a little bit there. That's okay. Time is coming up at the end of the next text box. You go until you have no more inputs to do. What's the matter? The CIA got you pushed. 147 37, even with a handful of deaths. Still well below estimate. We had probably some of the worst deaths we possibly could. We died in five at the towards the end of five three. We got first try five four. Uh, a lot of skip. We got some good stuff. And it was a solid run. Solid run. So that everybody was Yoshi's Island, Super Mario World Two. Thank you so much for your consideration in my submission, and I hope to hear good news from you. Take care and enjoy the credits. Overall, not a bad run. Not bad. I'm okay with that.
Also, favorite soundtrack in this whole game is this credits. After the hard, hard fought run, it's probably the most peaceful, the calmest, the nicest music in the whole game. And you just feel, you just feel lifted listening to it. Good stuff. Covered just about everything in this game. I can't think of any last minute little tidbits. So we'll just give some shout outs. Shout out to the Yoshi's Island community. You guys are fantastic. MT, Crispy, David, underscore tricks, real, Andy Kuma. Brooklyn, Ra the Round Cube, Enter the Kiwi, Falco, so many names, so many awesome runners. You guys have been fantastic. Thanks for supporting me. It's been a journey. It's been a lot of fun. I love this game. It's, it's been good. I can pick it up every time and just enjoy myself. And I think that's the most important thing. And the stork swoops down into the village to kidnap, I mean deliver, more children. Oh look honey, twins! Great! <laughs> Once again, I am Colthor the Barbarian, submitting to AGDQ 2017. Thank you so much for your time, and please consider my submission. You all have a great evening, and take care. Peace! And to those of you still watching, uh, probably more runs later tonight. 142 attempts. See you then! Hype!